Hello everyone, I'm Bob McFarlane, the software developer on the Save the Cat team. I'll be your host for this video as we take a look at getting started with the desktop version of Save the Cat software. This is the first in a series of videos where I'll be talking about how to use the software. We want to keep the videos short and sweet, so each one will focus on just one or two aspects of the software. So be sure to check out all the videos. As of right now, we have several available, but we'll be adding more in the future. Now before we dive in, in addition to the tips and information we include in the software, there are six books that are great resources to give you an even deeper understanding of the Save the Cat approach to storytelling. Start with the original by Blake Snyder called Save the Cat, then follow that up with Save the Cat Strikes Back, also by Blake. If you're a novelist, you need to get Jessica Brody's book called Save the Cat Writes a Novel. An English professor told me it was the best book on novel writing he had ever read. Then to really dive in deep, Save the Cat Goes to the Movies and Save the Cat Goes to the Indies. Both of those books provide many examples of beat sheets from very well-known movies. And last but not least, Blake's Blogs, a great collection of Blake's insights. Okay, let's go to the demo. I've started Save the Cat for the first time, and here we are, ready to activate. In order to unlock the app and your story, you'll need to activate using the serial number you received when you signed up. There are two types of activation, internet and manual. Most everyone will use the internet activation, but on that rare occasion where you don't have an internet connection, you can use the manual activation. Whichever method you use, you'll fill in your name, email address, and serial number. We ask for your name and email address so we can retrieve your serial number for you in case you lose it. Speaking of your serial number, here's a little trick. Go to the email you received with your serial number in it and copy the serial number. Switch back to Save the Cat and click the little paste button next to the serial number. Voila! No need to type it in. After filling everything in, click the Activate button. I'll do that in a minute after I talk about the manual activation. If you have to use the manual activation, send your serial number and the code number shown to tech at blakesnyder.com. If you use the copy button, you can paste the code into the email. When I receive the email, I'll generate an activation code and send it back to you. Enter the activation code here. Be sure to fill in your name, email address, and serial number as well. Then click Activate using activation code to complete the manual activation process. Now I'll go ahead and activate via the internet. If successful, a message pops up letting me know that I've activated successfully. And now we're ready to go to work. So what are we looking at? Over here is the current version of Save the Cat. You can see that I have the Essentials plan. If there were an update available, that will be shown down here with a link where you can download it. You've probably noticed this Deactivate button. Most plans allow for activating on two computers. The teachers and student plans allow for activating on one computer. If you need to change computers and don't have any activations available, click Deactivate to deactivate this computer. That will free up an activation to use on another computer. Let's talk about the types of projects you can create. All subscription plans include these four types of projects. A movie, half-hour TV episode, one-hour TV episode, and a novel. What's the difference? The main difference is the beat sheet. The beat sheet consists of the 15 beats or story points that every well-told story will hit as the story progresses. We've adapted the beat sheet for each of those project types. For example, a TV episode has commercial breaks. The beat sheet for a TV show has to incorporate those act breaks for the commercials. And for a novel, the timing of each beat is a little different than for a movie. So pick the correct type of project and you'll have the correct structure to work with. I have now switched from the Essentials plan to the Premium plan, and you can see that we have an additional project type, Novel by Chapter. This option was requested by multiple novelists. Novel by Chapter doesn't use a beat sheet. Instead, you'll set up one or more sections for your novel, then add one or more chapters to each section. You'll develop your story within chapters by adding scenes, character arcs, and so on. But we'll dive into that in another video. I've now switched to the Pro version, and you can see some more additional project types have been added. All of these are for a series. Instead of just a single movie, you can develop an entire series of movies with sequels, prequels, and spin-offs that include the same characters, locations, and so on. The same goes for a series of novels. 
you'll add one or more groups of novels, then add one or more novels to each group. And obviously, for a TV series, you'll add one or more seasons and one or more episodes for each season. In all of these series types of projects, you'll have a main board that encompasses the entire series where you can track character arcs and other story elements across the entire series. And you'll also be able to open each individual movie, novel, or episode in its own window with its own beat sheet and board. We'll go into more detail in other videos, but let's start a new project so I can explain something that you'll see. I'll start a movie. I'll give it a file name. I happen to be demonstrating with the Mac version. Notice it says to select a location on your local hard drive. Apple has added an option to move your desktop and documents folder to iCloud. This is great for freeing up space on your local hard drive. What this means, however, is that if you have your project files in one of those locations or any other location that is on iCloud, Mac OS will constantly try to move the file from your hard drive to iCloud, even while Save the Cat is trying to save changes to it. Think of it like this. You're sitting at your desk writing a nice handwritten letter to a loved one, and suddenly someone yanks the piece of paper away. The paper now has a nice long streak on it, and you find yourself writing on the desk because the paper is no longer there. Now this doesn't just happen with Save the Cat. It also happens with other apps. So to help prevent you from writing on your desk, so to speak, Save the Cat will check the location you've selected for your file to see if it is on an iCloud drive. So if you type in a file name and click Save, and this window pops right back up, that means you've selected an iCloud drive. This window will continue to pop back up until you've selected a location that is actually on your physical hard drive. Now, I don't have an iCloud drive selected, so I'll click Save and we should be fine. Now, it happened quickly, but one thing that just happened was that your master preferences were copied into this new file. What are master preferences? There are many things that you can configure so that Save the Cat works the way you want it to work. When you start a new project, those master preferences are copied into your project so that if you want to make changes specific to a project without affecting future projects, you can make those in the project preferences. When you make changes in your project preferences, they will only affect your current project. But you will often have the option to copy the changes to your master preferences so they will be available for future projects as well. All right, that's it for this video on getting started with Save the Cat software. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to check out our other videos. And remember, if you have any questions, suggestions, or run into any issues, drop me an email at tech at blakesnyder.com. Be sure to visit our website at savethecat.com. And finally, as Blake liked to say, remember, find the fun in everything you write, because having fun lets you know you're on the right track.